Hi guys, how you doing? My name is Dr. Colin Hill and I teach at Tennessee Tech University. Today we'll be talking about the MTS BOA 9th and 10th grader timpani etude. All right, this thing's not too bad. There's some quick dynamic shifts between forte and piano and some staccato markings, um, which note that we need to dampen. That makes things a little bit tricky at times. So we're just gonna work our way through from beginning to end and hopefully my tips help out a little bit. So at the very beginning, we have these dotted quarter notes that go down the drums. And we can certainly play them like this. My only problem with that is when we get down to the bottom, we have all three of these drums ringing. And so there's a little bit of um, extra noise that we can take out using dampening. So usually we dampen when there's a rest in the music, but we can also dampen for clarity reasons. We call this clarity dampening. So I'm actually gonna dampen the previous drum when I strike the next drum. So I'm gonna do this. One, two, and three. So notice my right hand dampens as I strike the following drum. And that just gives you really clear, good clarity of pitch. When you get to measure three, make sure you play suddenly louder, all right? And then following that, you have to play suddenly softer. So this is kind of a challenging spot make sure we hear three distinct dynamics in the first line. So something like this. All right, really clear with those three dynamics. And really there's four if you count the forte with the forte accent as being one notch higher. All right, when we get to uh, the end of measure five, we have a roll on beat four. All right, and it decrescendos. So in order to get a really effective decrescendo on timpani, I actually change my roll speed as I get softer. So I'm gonna roll fast at the beginning and I'm gonna slow my hands down near the end of it. All right, so you get something like this. I'll kind of do it in an extended amount of time. I roll fast first, and then I slow my hands down as I get softer. So by the time I'm done, I'm much slower than I was to start and I'm gonna release fluidly on the bottom drum here. So in context about this tempo, you're gonna get something like this. All right, one more time. Just as ever so slightly slow down the hands. All right. Now, the end of four of measure six, we have a staccato marking, all right? So we definitely have to dampen that because staccato means short and detached. We don't want any resonance leading over into the downbeat of measure seven. So we have to definitely dampen that A after we play it on the downbeat of seven. But the only problem is we also have this high D flat ringing as well. So we have to dampen that, okay? So I'm actually going to do on three and when I strike, the A flat on the end of four, I'm also gonna dampen this top drum and then dampen the bottom drum on the downbeat of measure seven. So let me just do it a few times. That's a lot of explanation. Let me show you what I mean. So here's three and and one of measure six going into the downbeat of measure seven. It's gonna look like this. So I dampen my right and then my left. Watch one more time. That way we get no sound on the downbeat of measure seven. All right. You could of course just dampen both of them at the same time. If you prefer, it's a little easier, but I like to do that clarity thing if I can. All right, either one's acceptable though. All right, when we get to measure seven, just make sure you start those triplets with the correct hand. Uh, you really could start uh, the end of one with the right hand is probably the best option. Since your left hand is dampening, it's easier to play your, the end of one with your right hand, so you have time to get, lift your left hand up off the drum. All right, the end of four of measure seven, though, you definitely need to start with your left hand so you can get to the top drum. All right, if you start with your right hand, you're gonna have a crossover of some sort. You don't want that. All right. The tuning change is just these two drums and you have plenty of time to do it. Uh, each drum goes up a half step. All right, so I'll just do that very quickly. Just make sure that you maintain that perfect fourth interval. All right. When we get to measure 14, we have a roll. 
all right? And it's on this top F. This is relatively high in the range of the timpani, so we have to roll pretty quickly, all right? As we get lower on the instrument, lower on the range of the instrument, we can roll slower, all right? But up here, we have to roll pretty quickly. All right. And then you dampen immediately on beat three. So one, two, off, four. All right, kind of a tricky spot to get the sound out right on beat three. Measure 15 uh, requires a little bit of some sticking challenges. One thing that I would do is I would do right, right, left, right, right. That would be my sticking. Now we have another one of those staccatos, all right? So you can take out both at the same time if you wanted to. The only problem is we have now this drum ringing, all right? This D natural. So we have to get that one out sooner. So here's what I would do. I would do this for my dampening. Now all the drums are out. So when I sh hit the F, I also dampen this D. So watch one more time in slow motion. Dampen, dampen, dampen. So we dampen three different times for each drum. All right, so try that. When we get to measure 17, I'm really gonna roll into the release of the eighth note. So the quarter note's gonna connect to the release on the eighth note. All right, so it'll be something like this. One, two, ready, and one, two, and. into that release and then same thing here on B3 all right so in context about this tempo all right now measure 18 we have two paradiddles that decrescendo all right so just work out that sticking that is notated so we should probably follow that all right and at the very end we have a retard, this is measure 19. Uh, but we also have to dampen a little bit because we have some notated rests. Now when you dampen, when you're playing very, very quietly, we have to be careful that the dampening isn't actually louder than the music itself. So we have to do a few things to make sure we don't hear this. And then we also don't hear, when we take our hand off, that kind of sweeping sound. So I would dampen with my left hand on beat two. And then, wherever my mallet sits in my hand naturally, I would try to play in roughly that spot. So I'm gonna play right here on the drum. So I don't have to dampen, move my hand, which is gonna cause that sweeping sound, all right? So I'm gonna go, so I'm just right there. And then I'm gonna dampen with my right hand. And again, wherever my mallet sits, or with this lower drum, I'm gonna play in that spot so I can go, dampen. Now I'm right there for this last little bit. All right, just a little tip to get you less contact noise on the dampening. And then the last roll, just make sure you hold it long enough. All right, it's for four counts with the fermata. So make sure you give it the full value plus a little bit more. Don't cut it short. All right. So uh, if you have any more questions about this, please feel free to email me or contact me via Facebook. All right, and uh, best of luck with this.